Well, uh, it definitely is a new old info. Yeah. Uh, basically, without trying to, to sound derogatory, but I remember your tweet yesterday when you were asking whether this is a mere lipstick on a pig or whether this is a new brand pig. new pig. Yeah. Well, I would say it's somewhere in between. Maybe, let's say, this would be a pig with a significant... Uh, plastic surgery and maybe even some transplant of some uh, vital organ, let's say liver or maybe even heart. What has changed is now that uh, Charles Phillips and his lieutenants from Oracle, they come with lots of experience with the mm. uh, acquisitions and also trying to do some, uh, make uh, some sense out of Oracle's acquisitions and, and come up with the fusion. Mm. They might have even learned by some mistakes that were done sure. there, so they know how to avoid that uh, those mistakes here and they really exude the confidence and they seem to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know they're moving very well um, in terms of uh, where they're going with the cloud but you know Infor is in the position that many other uh, traditional vendors are in because they have uh, you know a large install base and they have a large on-premise um, custom many customers are on-premise with mm -hmm. their ERP solutions and um, you know they're facing competition from the new guys like NetSuite and even SAP with their by design uh, offerings. So, right. so Infor you know needs um, you know a cloud ERP uh, solution which they have introduced in the form of their SiteLine offering, which is now offered as a true cloud ERP offering. It's not just hosted, but mm -hmm. they actually have it running uh, in a multi-tenant environment, um, with a shared infrastructure. Uh, and that's, uh, that's good from that standpoint. And they've put up some pretty impressive numbers. So okay. if I recall the numbers uh, correctly, they've got uh, uh, 1,200 uh, customers yeah. uh, using the cloud solutions. Again, not the hosted offerings, because they also offer hosted uh, solutions. Sure. Um, and I think the number is 2.4 million uh, users mm. uh, on those systems. So it's a pretty significant um, you know, a demographic there in terms of how many they actually have on. In, I think in, they've made good progress. In, in terms of the numbers, I mean, it's, it's an untold story in many ways, isn't it? So, I mean, it was a big surprise to me to hear that. Uh, it is. It is a, an untold story because you hear about NetSuite and some of the other uh, guys that are cloud-only providers. Sure. And we know of them as, as cloud providers, but you don't think of, of Infor as a cloud as a cloud provider, but they do have a significant number of, uh, of installs, and I think it's very impressive. Uh, like you just pointed out, Salesforce actually made an investment in Infor, yeah. which um, was interesting. Yeah. So there's some skin in the game, yeah. and they're doing this uh, joint development, um, you know, both uh, with uh, Infor, uh, developers and Salesforce uh, resources. I guess I would say um, the progress is definitely being made on the HCM side. I've seen tremendous new functionality in the talent management capabilities, a great UI and, and uh, new capabilities. Mm -hmm. The plans for workforce management are really coming along, an entirely new look and feel and, and mobile capabilities. Um, I'm a little disappointed that we aren't seeing more integration with the Infor 10 platform. There's tremendous opportunity hmm. for integration, for uh, leveraging the motion platform, and that's not quite here yet, but th they're talking a lot about those plans as we look to the future. Okay. When you say there's opportunity, what do, what do you mean by opportunity from a, a customer standpoint? What can they get from this that perhaps they can't get today? Yeah. Um, so today, the loss in applications in the HCM space consist of four components. We've got uh, the HR component, mm. we have the talent management on the landmark platform, we have workforce management which was acquired from WorkBrain several years ago, and um, we also have the Enwisen um, acquisition which came really through Lawson, but it's the human resource service delivery platform. And the approach that uh, the Infor Lawson team is taking is to combine those four applications together mm. under a unified look and feel within Wizen. But the reality is, for customers, there are still point-to-point -point integrations between each of those four uh, components. Mm. HR to talent management requires a, an integration, a bi-directional integration. And I believe that as uh, the, the Lawson team starts to leverage the N410 platform, those integrations will become much smoother, uh, a, a seamless user experience, the ability to really surface analytics mm. um, contextually using the new workspaces capability in N410, and just really making a much 
more seamless, richer experience for the customers and their end users. Um, Lawson has started to introduce social into their applications. I was really excited to see that in their recruiting, for example, they've, in, they've uh, integrated social components. So uh, linking into the LinkedIn profile, for example, and being able to bring some of that, that uh, visibility of the external social profile. Mm -hmm. It's a great start. But that's just a beginning. And really what I'm looking to um, Lawson and N4 combined is to expand their approach to social in their applications. Mm. When I was looking at the uh, N4 uh, 10 platform, they have some collaboration capabilities, but they're not really meeting the full needs of a, a full social networking platform. Mm. And I really believe that to be successful in the future of work, uh, in for Lawson is going to have to embed a full social component into the DNA of their technology as opposed to plugging in activity streams or uh, the, oh. the okay well <laughs> okay so I guess at the bottom line is I'm seeing some components yep. but I'm not seeing the whole solution right but they're making a step and frankly it's a step in the right direction.